Hello everybody, this is Zoe from No Safer Place and again it still may be a little bit echoey in here because I have just moved and there's no furniture in here. So yesterday I went to see Waitress for the first time. Now if you don't follow me on my social media you won't have seen that I won these tickets. I went to see Marisha Wallace who plays Becky at her Sunday favourite show at the Other Palace. She had a raffle going that anyone that bought a ticket was entered into. You got a raffle ticket as you walked into the theatre. I somehow managed to win and you got two tickets to the show and then a backstage tour with Marisha afterwards, which I was so, so excited about. So I chose a Wednesday matinee and the seats that she got us were absolutely amazing. So we were in the stalls and we were on row D, which was just four rows from the front, which I think was absolutely amazing. So thank you so much, Marisha, for those. So as I say, I was in row D and it's at the Adelphi Theatre and the Adelphi Theatre has always had such a special place in my heart because it was the first theatre that I saw one of my favourite shows at and that was Sweeney Todd back in 2012. And as I was talking to Marisha, I said to her that the last time I was here was when I went to see Sweeney Todd and I feel like whenever I come to the Adelphi Theatre, it's all about pies. She laughed and said that this show is a little less mean and I completely agree, but I just found it funny that I just love the pies at the Adelphi, but I think the waitress ones are far better than the Sweeney Todd ones. So when we walked into the lobby of the Adelphi Theatre, it's absolutely amazing. There's a few photo opportunities where you can take pictures at the diner. They sell little pies that you can buy and eat in the theatre, which I think is such an amazing touch. I'm not sure what flavours there were because I didn't get any, but they looked amazing. Obviously there's the usual merch, which was amazing. I just got this programme because I always get a programme from every show that I go to and this one was only £5, which I thought was pretty good. Considering the Heather's one was £10, that's a bargain. So when I went in, I had listened to the soundtrack quite a lot. I knew a lot of the songs, I was familiar with most of them. My husband, who I went with, wasn't, so he went in completely blind. I went in knowing the songs, but not really knowing the story too well, only what I had picked up from listening to the music. So for any of you that are living under a rock and don't know what Waitress is about, the premise is that it is about three waitresses who work at Joe's Pie Diner. We have Jenna, who is our main character, and Becky and Dawn. So in this performance, Jenna was played by Lucy Jones, Dawn was played by Ashley Roberts, and Becky was played by Marisha Wallace. And the story is about their lives and the secrets that they're hiding, and the secrets that everyone kind of has, I think, in their everyday life, but just highlighting them on a stage and the harsh reality of what people's lives might be and how much you put up a front when you're at work as opposed to what's going on at home. So our main character, Jenna, her life is turned absolutely upside down when something unexpected happens and things will never be the same. I'm trying to be really vague because if you haven't listened to music and you don't know the premise at all, I don't want to give too much away, but it is a massive life change that happens to her and it wasn't something she expected or particularly wanted. So I will just leave the plot at that because as I say, I think if you want to go in blind, that's something you need to discover for yourself. You don't need me to tell you every single plot. What I loved about the three main ladies is that they are all completely flawed with no real redemption at the end, no real apology for the things that they've done. They all make really questionable decisions and they never really ask for any forgiveness from the audience, which I think makes it so much more realistic and makes the characters so much more believable. So there are a few affairs in it, and one of the characters, I'm not going to say who because I feel like it's a bit of a spoiler, but her husband is ill and we never really meet him. This character looks after her husband, as well as working full time, and she does make some, as I say, questionable decisions, but there's no real apology to us we just have to accept it and if we like her we like her if we don't we don't and i really loved that about this play i think it's a really brave and bold decision a bold choice and yeah i really loved that aspect of it as i say it is absolutely full of affairs it is full of sex scenes which are absolutely hilarious there's a lot of emphasis on family on friendships just everyday life and experiences but they're interwoven 
with the perfect amount of wit and comedy and silliness, which I think was absolutely fantastic. I think the balance was really well done. If you're triggered by abuse, I wouldn't suggest going to see this play. There is a lot of emphasis on abuse in this. It goes into quite a lot of detail, depicts quite a lot of scenes. I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but the character of Earl is played absolutely brilliantly. As someone that has lived in an abusive household, watching that on stage and watching him portray this abusive character was done brilliantly. I was actually in awe of him. There were so many times throughout the abusive scenes where I was choking back tears. I can actually feel myself welling up now just talking about it because he was that good and that accurate. But obviously, if you are triggered by those scenes, I wouldn't go and see it because they are very heavy and very accurate which I think props to the show for highlighting how awful it can be so well. Let's talk a little bit about the songs. I loved the songs beforehand, but seeing them live on stage just gave it a whole nother perspective. They were absolutely out of this world. For example, the Bad Idea reprise, I didn't hate it when I listened to it, but I wasn't like a huge fan of it. But on the stage, it is one of the funniest songs in the whole production. I actually had tears rolling down my face from how funny it is. Basically during that song, there are multiple sex scenes going on, on the stage with all our main characters. And I'm not gonna tell you any more than that, but just watch out for it because it's absolutely hilarious. And while we're speaking about me crying of laughter, I also did a lot of crying of sadness. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. My favourite song in the whole show is Everything Changes. It made me cry listening to it on the soundtrack, so I was fully prepared for how much it was going to make me cry in person, and it did not disappoint. I was full on sobbing, to the point where you can't breathe because you're trying to suppress your tears so much because you don't want to full on start making noises in the theatre. And then you suddenly have to release, and it's like... Ugh, ugh, ugh. That's what I was like. It was so bad, nearly left, but I thought I can't leave this close to the end, so I pulled through. She Used To Be Mine was the best I have ever heard it. I have seen so many covers of this song, heard so many recordings, and Lucy's was the best I have ever heard. The emotion in her voice, the rawness, just the sheer disappointment in herself is just heartbreaking and she portrays it so well. It comes across exactly how it should do and oh, just the emotion in her face. Again, can feel myself starting to cry. How pathetic is that? <laughs> so talking of Lucy, I know that she'd done a few waitress shows beforehand, but she officially started on the Monday and she was amazing. I got to meet her afterwards, but I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the video. She was fantastic. Marisha, oh, her voice is probably the best female vocalist I have ever heard. She opens her mouth and the whole theatre is just in awe of her. Obviously, I saw her at her solo concert, but seeing her, this was my first time seeing her on an actual theatre stage in a production and she was out of this world. Even my husband looked at me after her song, I Didn't Plan It, and just said, wow, she is the best singer by a mile. And it's true, Lucy and Marisha, you're both queens, absolute queens. Let's talk about Ashley. I saw lots of controversy before I went into this about Ashley's singing. I have to say her acting was absolutely amazing. Considering she was a singer and not an actress, I wouldn't have been able to know that because her acting was amazing. I thought she was great as Dawn as an actress. Singing, she wasn't terrible. I will say that, she wasn't terrible at all. I'd seen so many bad reviews about her and she wasn't terrible. I just think if you'd seen and heard Laura, and you'd seen and heard the original production from Broadway, you would be a little bit disappointed. I don't want to be too harsh because I know she's only just started. I, th I think it was maybe her third or fourth performance, so she probably is still settling down, but, but it just felt a little bit breathy. I feel like that's the best way I can describe it. As someone who struggles with my breath when singing a lot, she kind of sounded like me. <laughs> but yeah, the acting was amazing, and when she was singing, as a group, brilliant too. Just that one song, When He Sees Me. I guess, yes, I have heard it better, but no shade. 
Blake Harrison and David Hunter, who play Ogie and Dr. Pomata, were fantastic. Like, I don't even know what else to say about them. They were amazing, just like Lucy and Marisha. David's voice is just beautiful. He just melts my heart. Completely fell in love with him in that. This is the first thing I've seen him in and yeah, completely in love with him. In terms of my favorite song, Everything Changes, as I said earlier, and The Negative. I've always loved The Negative. Seeing it on stage was even funnier. The set was just absolutely amazing. I will talk a little bit more about the set later when I show you a few photos from backstage and talk a little bit about that experience, but the set was mind blowing. It looked so realistic and the detail was just wow. The ending was just euphoric and even though it wasn't quite what I was expecting, it was perfect. It was the perfect ending because I can't really say why it was the perfect ending because I don't want to spoil it. But if you want to know why I thought it was the perfect ending, just hit me up and I'll let you know. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about backstage. You'll probably have seen some photos earlier that I inserted about where I was sitting and maybe some pictures at the end because if you didn't know, Right at the end, when it's the curtain call, you can take photos and videos of the cast, which I think is such a lovely touch. So I went straight to a stage door after the show and went upstairs to see Marisha. I have never been backstage anywhere before. So to go backstage at a theatre that is so special to me, I was absolutely thrilled. So I wrote down a few notes on my phone about things that we talked about. Obviously, I'm not going to go into too much detail because a lot of it, I feel like, should stay between us. But I just wrote down a few things that I thought were really exciting and fun. So I asked Marisha what her favourite song was to perform. And I expected she would say I didn't plan it. And that is one of her favourites. But she also likes A Soft Place to Land. We were also talking about the differences between Broadway and West End. I really wanted to ask her about those because obviously she's been in both and I wanted to know how similar they were, what the differences were and we went up to her dressing room afterwards and she showed us how big it was. It was absolutely huge and she said that is one of the main differences is that when you're in Broadway you kind of get like a, a little box but in the West End, the rooms are so much bigger. And I'll be honest, I've seen a few dressing rooms, like photos of them in, and in videos. And hers was so big. It was so lovely. So I was talking to the guys behind the set and asking how long it took to get everything set up for the shows. He told me that it takes 45 minutes to set everything up for the first show. And then in between, it takes about 25 to 30 minutes. And there were so many people there. That was one of the things that shocked me the most, how many people were behind there setting everything up. And I spoke to Marisha about that and she said that there aren't even really that many people in this production, that it's a really tight production and they tried to get as few people as possible working on the set. And I was just like, whoa. She said that Dreamgirls had about double that and our, my mind was just blown. I had a look at a lot of the props and I got to see a lot of them, saw how everything worked. And she told me that all of the sugar that they use in the show is actually salt because they didn't want to attract too many insects and bugs. And then this is a really niche thing that I wanted to know, but I wanted to know what was inside the eggs because obviously they can't use real eggs, but they looked so real. So I had a look at that and they're actually apricots and a washing up liquid. Like, who thinks of that kind of stuff? Food, especially the pies, everything looks so real the only thing that is real on the pies is the cream and only sometimes but everything is magnetic like the oreo that dawn uses in when he sees me it's magnetic and it looks so real like the lemon slices are magnetic i had a feel of those and Marisha said that they were all so expensive. And then when we was looking at the band backstage, there was loads of sheet music up because sometimes they play off stage as well as on stage. So that was really cool to look at. And she explained about how the tables move on and off and that there's a track which we got to look at. And I didn't realize that everything was on a track. I mean, I feel like maybe if you're a bigger theater fan than me, you will already know all this stuff, but because I'd never been backstage, I'd never even really thought about this kind of thing. So seeing the track in action was just amazing. And just getting to stand on a West End stage that so many amazing actors have stood on. It was really overwhelming just looking out at a stage that I have watched so many productions from. I mean, Sweeney Todd alone I saw four times because I was that in love with it. 
yeah i just got a real lump in my throat and i just stood there taking it all in but yeah we also got some photos inside the diner with marisha and i got some photos on the stage with marisha and my husband i will insert these now just so you can have a look at them i'm absolutely thrilled with them i came away looking at them like oh my god i cannot believe this has actually happened so we also got to meet lucy who plays jenna she was so so lovely again i saw her at marisha's concert at the other palace so it was so nice to finally meet her and i said to her that my favorite song was everything changes and i'm so pleased that she did it justice and she also said that that was her favorite song to perform and i was like oh my god so we had a little bit of a fangirl about that because i don't really know that many people whose favorite song is everything changes especially jenna herself so yeah marisha and lucy were both so so lovely so a big thank you to Marisha for making this happen. I will definitely be coming back to see Waitress very, very soon. I'm also going to see her at West End Proms along with Jamie Moscato and Jodie Steele, who you guys know I'm a massive fan of. So if you haven't been to see Waitress yet, please, please go and see it. If you've only listened to the music or you've not seen it at all, it's just so much better. The soundtrack doesn't do it justice. I really hope there's a UK one because I would love to hear Lucy and Marisha on that soundtrack. If you've been to see it, I would love to know your thoughts. I would love to know what your favorite song is, who your favorite character is. Leave it all in the comments below and let's get talking about it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up or leave me a comment or maybe even subscribe. If you do, you can turn the notification bell on to be notified when I upload new videos, which is usually every Tuesday and every Saturday. Although I haven't been very good at uploading recently. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. Let me know what you would like to see more of on my channel and I hope to see you all again soon. Thank you. Bye. Hi guys, so I'm here with my contest winners, Zoe and Hi. Hayden. <laughs> and Hayden. We had, they came to see the show. How'd you like the show? It was absolutely amazing. And you had heard the music, but you hadn't heard anything. No, no, I knew absolutely nothing. <laughs> she was amazing. See? She was amazing. Boom, you could be a winner too, and now we're taking them backstage. <laughs> so make sure you enter the next one, right? Yeah, and you need to come and see Waitress straight away. It's so, so good. Yes, was Zoe said.